Alagbara, you are the mighty God. Eila to be you, you are the glorious God. Alagbara, you are the mighty God. Eila to be you. You are the glorious God. Alagbara, Alagbara. You are the mighty God. And you are the glorious God. Alagbara, Alagbara. My God, the Alone to to be alone ba 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 alone to to be alone ba.
You are the love of the earth. Kabi yo, si yo, kabi yo, si See you. Oh, you are, you are the love. You are God. Oh, Kabi, oh, Oh, Kabi, oh, Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Happy new month to everyone. I want to thank God for this privilege to um to bring this word to us and most importantly to thank my daddy for this opportunity. It's it's been a while I I, I did this, but I trust that the Holy Spirit will minister to our hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Um, I'm to do the uh, welcome charge quickly. I want to speak on give me understanding. And the anchor scripture is um first chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32. Because of our time, permit me to read first chronicles. If you have your Bible by you, 
you can have a look on first chronicles 12 32 and it says and of the children of Issachar which were men that had understanding of the times keep an eye on understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their commandment at the second scripture for an anchor is second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1 it says this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come i'm speaking briefly on give me understanding what is understanding what is understanding understanding is the ability to comprehend to grasp the meaning of something or to have insight into a situation understanding is your ability is my ability to grasp the meaning of a thing Again, understanding is the ability to assimilate, the ability to interpret an information. Understanding is very, very vital in life. Now, why do we need understanding? Just like we read in that scripture, it is important we strive to have understanding in the times of our lives. It is important that we have understanding at workplace for our family life for every sphere of our life it is very very vital for us to have understanding why because in the kingdom of god what differentiates every believer is the understanding that that individual possess the understanding level that is what gives us ranking in the realm of the spirit now david said in psalm 119 and verse 114 he said that thy right the righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting give me understanding that i will live in other words if we don't have understanding we are not living and you know no wonder solomon said he that wandered out of the way of understanding shall dwell in the congregation of the dead he that wandered out of the way of understanding shall dwell in the congregation of the dead. Now, anything we don't understand, that means we are not dwelling in life. The life, the essence of that thing is gone out of it. So it is very vital. Again, we need understanding to, to, to operate in our times and in our seasons. Praise God. Now, what are the benefits of understanding? What are the benefits of this understanding? Number one, when you have understanding, you will never struggle in life. Now, look at what we have on First Chronicles chapter 12. First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32. It says, and of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of times. Now, to know what they ought to do per time. The Bible spoke about Jesus, the miracle. Uh, he said, he said, he himself knew what to do. So when you have understanding, you will always know what to do. One of the greatest benefits of understanding is that you will always know what to do. In other words, you will not live a struggle. You will not have a kind of struggle life. One of the reasons majority of Christians struggle is because they lack understanding in that particular area of life. Psalm 82 and verse 5 says, they know not, neither will they, will they understand. They walk on in darkness, all the foundations of the earth are without cause. So what you don't understand, that individual will live in darkness. That will not be our portion in the name of the Lord Jesus. The second aspect of it is that men will submit to you. Now, the sons of Issachar had the understanding of the times. And therefore, if you if you read carefully the concluding part of that scripture, it says that they were in command of 200 men. Wow. That means that when you have understanding, there is no system that you cannot understand. There is no way you cannot operate. But one key factor is understanding. The third aspect is that you will be able to maximize time. That is one another benefit of understanding. When you know what to do per time, you will not waste time doing the unnecessary things in life. And lastly, on the benefits of, of, of uh, understanding, he said, every man is established based on the operation of the understanding he carries. Every man is established in life based on the level of understanding he carries. Now, it says in the book of Proverbs chapter uh, 3 and verse 19 that the Lord by wisdom founded the earth and by understanding he had established the heavens and so a man is established in life 
any area you want to be established you go for understanding now wisdom and understanding goes hand in hand but our focus is having a clarity having the clarity having the know the know-how of what we want to do in life in any area we find ourselves as as believers and again he says through wisdom is a house built and by understanding it is established so what established us in life what established us in any area of life is the level of understanding that we can command no wonder in a class you see some people fail why some people will pass the simple reason is because they don't understand it the simple reason is because some understand it more than others our accomplishment in life is tied to the level of our understanding now i i, I want to close with this how do i get understanding because david said he said thy testimonies is says, give me understanding that i may live that means how can i get this number one you can ask that the lord give you understanding one way we get understanding in the kingdom is that lord give me understanding the bible says in whom the god of this heart has blinded the heart of them that believe not lest the glorious light of the gospel should shine on them and so when you lack understanding in a particular area of life you can ask that the lord give you understanding secondly how do i get understanding number two is ask questions any area any junction you can ask questions and one, one source of where you can get your answers from is the bible you ask valid question you ask the holy spirit show me in this particular area of, of life i lack understanding i don't understand this thing can you show me can you show me can you teach me he says i will show you the way in which I, you should go and i will watch you progress in it I want to close on this that uh, you can take advantage of mentorship to gain understanding there are people who have gone through the path that you are you are you are about to start they have deeper insight they have understanding in whatever area of life you want to go to when you submit to them that same level of grace that same level of, of understanding will come upon you i pray that this will be our portion today and always in the name of the lord jesus christ can, can we tell, ask the Lord to give us understanding in every area? Can we say, Lord, give me understanding? Grant me understanding in every area. You can just look at it. It can be, it, it's, it's not a journey you can finish in a day. Lord, grant me understanding of how to live in this particular area of life. Thank you, Jesus. I give you praise and I give you glory. Thank you, Father, for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious mighty name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to first and foremost appreciate my daddy for this privilege. Daddy, I will not take this for granted. Thank you for giving me this platform. I pray that the Lord will continue to sustain you and uphold you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to thank everyone present on site and those joining us online. I trust that tonight the Lord will visit us in the mighty name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, we bless and exalt your name. Daddy, we worship you, we honor you. We adore you, our Father and our King. What another wonderful privilege to come together at your feet. And Lord, we understand that you not just gather us for, for nothing. There's something that you want to do, and that is why you have gathered us this evening again. Daddy, I ask as we go through your word, that Father, you will grant us understanding just like we have had in the mighty name of Jesus. That the time that we we'll spend in this place tonight will not be in vain in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I ask that you take over. Voice out through me and reveal yourself to us that, that you want us to know in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father, for in Jesus' precious name I pray. For in Jesus' precious name I pray. Once again, you are welcome in Jesus' name. This ICG Global Fellowship. And I trust God, the Lord will do us good tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. As we all know, the topic before us this evening is a Christian at the workplace. A Christian at the workplace. What do we have to consider a Christian at the workplace? After all, we are all, Christ we are all Christian and we already know it. Why do we have to look at it as a topic that we have to discuss? I said that if every day, as long as we are on this side of eternity, we keep on hearing the word of God. We keep on hearing the word of God until Christ's appearance in glory. 
Like we have in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13. I want to read from the NLT. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13 says, But encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by the sins, deceitfulness. Today, first of March, is called today. As such, we need to remind ourselves, we need to encourage ourselves as long as it is called today. Even in our workplace, that we need to know who we are, even in our workplace. Now, we are considering this topic because at times you look at it, it's something that is very familiar. But I want to trust God that that, that he wants us to know, he will reveal to us in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to start by asking, who is a Christian? Is that, not fun, a fun, is, that, is that not a funny question? Who is a Christian? You just expect that everybody that is here now is a Christian. No. Until somebody comes to the consciousness and accept the ultimate sacrifice that Christ offered to mankind, you are not yet a child of God. A Christian is somebody that has accepted the lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ, that has accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and personal Savior. That's when you become a Christian. A lot of people go to church. They are just plain religious because they have never at one time or the other consciously or deliberately given his, their lives to Christ. As such, they are just plain religion. So you must understand that until somebody consciously and deliberately asks Christ to take over his or her life, that you consciously discover that I am a sinner and I cannot help myself. And all that Christ came to do on the cross of Calvary was for my sake. You have not started the journey already. You have not started at all. But the moment you come to realize that, yes, I'm a sinner and I cannot help myself. And the only way that God has paid for mankind is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Then you are now a Christian. You can say that you are a child of God. We have in John chapter 1 verse 12, the Bible says, John chapter 1 verse 12, but as many as received him, to them he gave the, power, the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name. You, you are not a Christian. You are not a child of God because you come to church. No. You become a Christian because you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And how do we do that? Galatians chapter 3 verse 26 says, for you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. We become children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Until you have put your faith in all that Christ did for us on the cross of Calvary, like I said before, you are only plain religion. You are not yet a child of God. As Christians, we are called ambassadors of God. Christians, the Bible says we are representative of God's kingdom here on earth. Therefore, wherever we find ourselves at our workplace, we are expected to represent the kingdom of God. And I have that in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 28. The Bible says, the message version said, we are Christ's representative. That now you are a child of God. You are born again. You are now a Christian. You must have that understanding. You are not just a Christian for the fun of it. You are representing the one that you call your Lord. And that's the understanding I want us to get. And they have at the back of your mind. Because that will help us to know how to behave and, not, and know, know how to behave. In First John chapter 4, verse 17, he said, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have goodness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. I want to know, I know, I want to believe we are familiar with that. As Christ is, so we are in this world. And that's part of our anthem. We're not just singing it for the fun of it. We are actually representing him here on earth. In our workplace, anywhere you find yourself, either as an employee or as an employer, you are representing somebody. Hallelujah. John chapter 17, verse 14. I want to read to through 16. Jesus Christ himself spoken. He said, I have given them thy word, and the word has hated them, because they are not of the word, even as I'm not of the word. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the word, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the word, even as I'm not of the word. We are not of the world. We are ambassadors here. We are not citizens of the world. Jesus confirmed that in the scripture that I just read. Jesus Christ himself was the one that said it. 
We are not from here. We are not citizens of this world, but we are representing the kingdom here. Just like a country will send their own representative to other nations of the world. And you know, when their representative gets there, they are the ambassador on that place. What do they do? They do the bidding of the country that sent them. They do the bidding of their home country. No matter what, it doesn't matter what is happening there. They are representing their own country. The same way we are representing God's kingdom here on night, on earth. As Christians at workplace, people might begin to do things the way they want to do. If you have that at the back of your mind, that you are an ambassador here, you are representing the one that you have called your Lord and personal Savior, that will help you to know how to behave. And I said here, yeah, I said Christians at workplace, they are moved by faith. They move by faith and not by sight. The things that happen to other people, which challenges confront other people, that they start running at us, get her. We are not moved. Why? Because we are moved by faith. And you know what? As Christians, we have our own company that we return to. We are not alone. That we are ambassadors here, that we are citizens here. We are not alone. When we are confronted with challenges of life, we have our own company that we return to. And this we saw in the life of the apostles. And then even Daniel, you remember, let me read Acts chapter 4, verse 23. And be let go. That's referring to the disciples, that's the apostle, when there was tribulation and they were arrested. The Bible says, and be let go. They went to their own country and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said unto them. Because they were not alone. They had their own company. People that had the same mindset, that had the same understanding. They went and explained to them, see what these people have said. I said, there will be time that you will need to return to your own company. And that is the essence of fellowship. And that is why we have, we fellowship with one another. As a believer, as a Christian, you must have a, a covenant family that you belong to. And that is the church. And that's why I, I want to say that you must never engage yourself in any work or job that will se separate you from that covenant family. Don't. Don't allow anything to separate you from that covenant family. Because whether you like it or not, something will happen in future. So a time will come that you will need to return to your own company. And another thing that amazes me is that some of us, that some Christians, when you see them, they are only Christians when they have found themselves among other Christian folks. When they are in the midst of people that doesn't know them, they don't want anybody to know that they are Christians. They just behave anyhow. They will just do things anyhow. And this is very practical that even in some social gathering, when they ask a Christian to pray, that's when you will know. They will deny the name of Christ. Instead of saying in Jesus Christ, we, in Jesus' name we pray, they will tell you in the name of God. And some of them will even go as far as saying, ah, we are all serving the same God. Why? Because they don't want to affect the people that are around there. They don't want to offend them. So they will pretend as if they are not children of God. And I want to, I, 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 I so much believe that you will never find an, an unbeliever or a non-Christian that will do that. Anywhere they are, like I was coming this afternoon, we did not even just talk to anybody. When it was time to pray, he just parked. And we were asking, what happened? Nobody will answer us. And they came out and they prayed, if, if you don't want, you can continue with the journey. As far as it's concerned, this, that was the time for prayer. What am I saying? As Christian, anywhere we are, at home, at workplace, we must stand for the one that has saved us. The one that we call our Lord and personal Savior. And Jesus Christ actually warned against this. As we see in Matthew chapter 10, verse 32. I will read Matthew chapter 10, 32 to 33. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, Jesus Christ himself speaking, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Anywhere we find ourselves, at home, at workplace, we must ensure that we stand for Christ. Because if we deny him, I'm not the one that wrote the scripture. He's the one that said he will also deny us before the Father. And I pray that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Now, we, we, are, we know who a Christian is. We know people that we can call a Christian. Then we are looking at a Christian at the workplace. What is workplace? A workplace can be former or an informal office or a location 
or an environment where we ca carry out our activities to earn our daily living. It could be a former place. It could just be in front of your house. It could be at one corner where you carry out activities or you render services that you are paid for. It could be a, something that you are doing as an employee or as an employer. That is your call a workplace. Now, a Christian at the workplace. Whenever we find ourselves, like I told us before, we already have it at the back of our minds that we are here as ambassadors. We are representing the kingdom of God. And there is need for us to walk in that consciousness. And I tell you, if we walk in the consciousness of the fact that we are representing somebody here, we will not do our work the way other people are doing it. Because we have an understanding that there is more to this work that we are doing wherever we are doing it. Now, I want to tell us that as a Christian, you don't just do your things and just feel that all ends here. No. Whatever we are doing, we do it with eternity in view. And it, as a result of that, you see that your workplace as your as divine assignment that God has given to you. See your workplace where you discharge your daily duty, where you carry out your activities, where you do your deliveries that gives you any, or that you are an employer. See it as a platform that God has given to you. And when you see your workplace as divine assignment, you will not do it anyhow. Either as an employee or as an employer. Now, whatever we are doing, we must know that we have it, we are doing it with eternity in view. When we cannot afford to do our things the way other people are doing it. And one of the things that characterize our work or what we do in our workplace is excellence. We are representing the one that is excellent in all that he does. And therefore, we cannot afford to behave anyhow. And that takes me to what are the expectations for a Christian at the workplace? Now that you know you are a Christian, at your workplace, you know you are not just there for the fun of it. First and foremost, there are things you are representing the kingdom of God in that place. If you have that understanding, it will affect your perspective in discharging your duty. Now, what are the expectations? What are the things that is expected of you as a child of God or as a Christian at the workplace? The first one I want to talk about is the fear of God. Or you call it reference for God. That as you discharge your duty, you have this understanding. First and foremost, you are accountable to the one you are representing there. Even before your boss. And if you have that understanding, that will help you to discharge your duty properly. To, to help you to carry out your work well. Because you know that you are accountable to somebody. Like I said before, whatever we are doing here on earth, and a place at the place of our work, we are doing it with eternal value. Now, that brings me to our the mission statement of this commission. Our mission statement, our vision statement said, bringing out the value in men and making them valuable unto God and their generation with eternity in view. That is why we are church with a difference. Christianity does not just when we get to heaven, so to prepare us when we get to heaven. No. We are to discover what we are supposed to do. And then we are, we are fed the generation, our generation, that we know that we, are, we don't belong here. We are going somewhere. And our mission statement said, to discover their potential, develop it and deploy it with eternity in mind. As a Christian in workplace, you must do your work with reverence to God. Because you know, you are accountable to him. And that will guide you the way you do your things in your place of work. I see God helping us in the mighty name of Jesus. Another thing I want to, I've just talked about the fear of God, reverence to God as we discharge our duties. Another one I want to talk about is excellence. As Christians at the workplace, we are to do our things excellently. You know, most people, don't know that as we are working, there are people that are watching you. The way you are doing your deal, whether you come late to work or you come early to work. No, people might not actually ask you. You might not even need to sign attendance. But I tell you, there are people that are watching. And you might not be able to tell that a day is coming and recommendation is needed in that area. And the people around you that have been watching you, then that comes to play. The things that others look at, this one does not matter. 
that you are paying attention to it because you are doing it excellently. You are doing it well. You are going extra mile. Then it will come to play. And this we see in the life of Daniel. Daniel chapter 6 verse 3. Daniel chapter 6 verse 3. He said, this Daniel, and this actually caught my attention. He said this Daniel, which means they my other people that bears the same name, Daniel. But the Bible says, then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and the priests because an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Daniel was not the only one that was there. We are meant to understand that Daniel was like a, more or less an administrator in his own time. But there was a thing he was doing. There was a way he was discharging his duty. And people notice that it's a different spirit in this man. An excellent spirit is in this man. And it was an excellent spirit that, took, that, that stood him out. So as we discharge our duty, we must ensure that we give it the best that it's required. We must get extra mind to make sure that whatever we are doing, right, I keep on emphasizing, either as an employee or as an employer, it's expected that we do it with excellence. And I see God helping us in the mighty name of Jesus. Another thing that we cannot separate from excellence is what we call skillfulness. That we display our skill. We are not an entity. That you are a Christian does not make you a non entity. You every skill that you need to acquire, you must have the highest skill in your area of influence so that you'll be able to do it perfectly. And people will see it and say, Yes, this person actually is skillful in this area. And that was what we saw in the life of David. David was just on his own, doing his own thing. But he never knew there were people that were seeing him. As we saw in First Samuel chapter 16, verse 18. Then one of the servants answered and said, now they were looking for somebody that is, that is skillful in playing the harps. But there was a servant that has been seeing David. And David was not aware. David was just doing his own thing. But he was good at what he was doing. And this particular servant, the day that they were looking for somebody to do that, this particular servant will remember David. That what the servant answered and said, look, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite. Who is careful in playing a mighty man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech, and a handsome person, and the Lord is with him? That was the last thing. What drew this man's attention? What drew this man's attention to get to know all this that he has enumerated concerning David? His skillfulness. He was skillful in what, what he was doing. The question I'm, I'm asking you in that your place of work, are you skillful? How are you discharging your duty? How are, what do you think people, how people are saying about the way you are discharging your duty in that area? That you are a Christian, like I said before, does not make you a non-entity. You are supposed to display the highest form of skill in that area. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, the next thing I want to talk about as a, that is expected of a Christian at the workplace is love and joy. You see, these two work together. And I say, Christian, they are must in your life. You must show love. You must show genuine concerns with people that you work with or people that you render service to. People must know that, yes, you are a lovable person. Why? Because the one that we are representing here, God, the Bible says, is love. And if you are representing him here on this side of eternity, you must show love to everyone around you in the place where you are working. And you must show genuine concern. And this again, we saw in the life of Joseph. Joseph was in prison like other prisoners. And the funny part of it is that other prisoners, they had jail terms. But Joseph had no jail term in the prison. But yet, he showed love. He showed concern. And that was what eventually took him to the throne. I said, we might never be able to tell that little kind gesture that you're showing to somebody, where it will take you to in life and destiny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm talking about love and joy. I say this too. As Christians at workplace, we cannot afford to mix out. Then joy is one of the evidences of the Holy Spirit. As we saw in our last Bible study, Acts chapter 13, verse 52. And the disciples were filled with joy 
and with the Holy Ghost. At what place? There are things that will happen that want to take your joy away if you don't have an understanding. But no matter what is confronting you at the workplace, never lose your joy. As a Christian at the workplace, no matter what, never allow anything to tamper with your joy. And you know what? Confidence and confidence and trust in God is one of the things that sustain our joy in the face of trouble and tribulation in life, even at the workplace. We must have that understanding. Joy, love. There are things that must be part and parcel of what, who we are and as we discharge our duties as employer or as an employee. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. The next thing I want to talk about is good personal relationship. I'm going to be a little bit fast now. Good personal relationship. I want to read 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. It's one of the scriptures that some Christians misunderstood. That make them to behave somehow at workplace. Second Corinthians six fourteen. Behave not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion has light with darkness? Because of this scripture, many Christians, some Christians at workplace, they keep to themselves. The Bible says we should not be unequally yoked together with them. That's not what the Bible is saying. What the Bible is saying in this place is in their character. The way they do things, we should not copy them. We should not do it like that. Not that we should not relate with them. Now, if we keep ourselves away from these people, how do you show them the love of Christ? How do you tell them about Christ? The Bible did not say we should remove ourselves from them. And then no, we don't want to, want to have anything to do with them. Then how do we get them saved? How do we preach to them? So we must make sure that in our workplace, we have good personal relationship. Now, I remember some years back, I went to go and visit a doctor. This doctor, I didn't know him before I met him that he's a Christian. But when I met him and after the visit, the way the man talked and said everything, everything, I just told myself, even if it's Christ that is here physically and I met him one-on-one, -on -one, he would have said anything different. Why? Because this man saw his platform, that is table, as an avenue to represent the kingdom. Yes, he's a medical doctor. That he brought that uh, the Christian, that the, 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 the one that he's presenting in that place, and he turned that his office to a place to impact life for the kingdom. And that is the way it should be. Wherever we find ourselves as Christian, we should be able to impact others at our workplace. You know what? Our workplace might only be our puppet. It might be the only platform that we have. All of us might not be able to come to a pulpit like this. But that your little corner, but that your office, from that you have, and like we used to say, that you might be the only Bible that somebody will read. What would they say about it? What would they, what, what, what will your life tell them? I want us to understand that our place of assignment should be a place where we represent God well. And I see God helping us in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to quickly talk about taking advantage of God's factor. That is something that we have as Christians at workplace. As a Christian at workplace, we have the God factor. And then if you don't have that understanding, you will just discover that what is making others to be run up and down will be making you to be run up and down too. But when you remember the investment of heaven over your life, when challenges and situations come against you at your workplace, you know how to turn to God and to his word. That's one of the God's factor advantage that we have as Christians. I want to read First John chapter 2, verse 27. I will read the good news. But as for you, Christ has poured into you his spirit. As long as his spirit remains in you, you do not need anyone to teach you anything. I'm going, to, I'm going to talk about the Holy Ghost as our advantage too. I've talked about the Ghost factor. I'm now referring to the Holy Ghost as our advantage as Christians. John, from John chapter 2, verse 27. But as for you, Christ has poured out his spirit on you. As long as his spirit remains in you, you do not need anyone to teach you. For his spirit teaches you about teaches you about everything and what it teaches you is true not false. obey the spirit teaching then you will remain in union with christ 
Now, I had somebody say online one time that the Holy Spirit did not teach us anything outside the scripture. I remember I sent it to daddy. I said, that is not correct. I am a witness that the Holy Spirit teaches me things that concerns my office. When things happen and we don't know what to do, I quickly whisper some things in his ear. And before you know it, an idea comes to my spirit. And what do I do? I know what to do. So the Holy Spirit teaches us things. We have the Holy Spirit as an advantage. As Christian at the workplace, you must understand that that you have the Holy Spirit as an advantage. And finally, as Christians, we must be conscious of our spirit, the, at the spiritual atmosphere of our workplace. And that is very, very important. That we are not just Christians that just do things like Daddy was telling us and the Greek service, that as we go out daily, we are met with spirits, the human spirit, the demonic spirit, and the divine. If you are not conscious of the spiritual atmosphere of your workplace, you will not know what to do part time. But if you are conscious of the spiritual atmosphere of your workplace as a Christian, as a child of God, you will know what to do. You will be in charge and you'll be in control. Now I want to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. The Bible says, Let Satan should take get, let Satan should get an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. I love the way NLT put it. He said, so that Satan will not smart us. So we are familiar with evil schemes. If you don't have the spiritual understanding of the, of the, of the spiritual atmosphere, if you don't have understanding of your spiritual atmosphere, the devil will are smart to you. And then to become too late for you to know what to do. But if you have the spiritual understanding of the, the atmosphere of your workplace, you know what to do. You will not, because you're not ignorant of the vices of the devil. We are not just employees or employers at workplace. Like I said before, we are ambassadors of Christ. And when we begin to work in the consciousness of that, I tell you, promotion, elevation, breakthrough and increase we begin to attend to us in our workplace in jesus name the lord will help us to be true ambassadors of the kingdom at our workplace the blessedness of knowing him will be evident in our lives at our workplace in the mighty name of jesus and before i take my seat i want us to read psalm 92 verse 12 to 14. psalm 92 verse 12 to 14. This place is talking to us as Christians or as children of God. And before I read this, could it be that you have never at one time or the other deliberately or consciously hand over your life to Jesus Christ? Possibly you are born in a home where you grew up to go to church. Everybody go to church. And there's never come a time where you deliberately or consciously give your life to Christ that you can now say, I am a Christian. I am a child of God. I tell you tonight it's not late. Even in that, you, you, wherever you are, you are joining us from all outside is something that you can still do today. And you're not just playing religion. You're not just coming to church, but that you are a child of God. And you live in the consciousness that you are representing heaven here where you are, here on earth, on this side of eternity, and most importantly, at our workplace. And the Lord will receive accept your soul and give you experience genuine salvation in the mighty name of jesus i'm reading psalm 92 verse 12 to 40 because this promise is just for the sons it's just for the people that have accepted him it's talking about the righteous children of god if you're not yet born again you are not giving your life to christ this is not connected to you psalm 92 verse 12 i read to verse 14 he said the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree do i have people in church I said, the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the court of our God. They shall bring forth fruit in old age, and they shall be fat and flourishing in the mighty name of Jesus. And this will be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. This will be our testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. As we go inside here, and begin to represent God and begin to be his ambassador. 
Living in the consciousness that we are not citizens of this world. I see all these blessings accomplishing us in the mighty name of Jesus. Why not just bow our head tonight and thank you for this word that he has brought to us. God has spoken to every one of us, including me, the Father. Thank you for your word that has come to us this evening. I don't know what way that he, that he has dropped something in your mind. Why not thank him for it? Why not appreciate him? For the privilege to be an ambassador for him on this side of eternity. Why not return all the glory to him? I receive grace. The Lord, I receive grace. to walk in the consciousness of an ambassador for you. Here on earth in the mighty name of Jesus. That I say, created in my workplace. Lord, I will represent who you well. I will represent you well as your ambassador. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now go in my place of work. I mean, like that's one of the things that God expects us to do. The Lord will receive grace to impact life consciously and intentionally in our place of work in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. We return all the glory to you, Lord. For in Jesus' precious name we pray. Hallelujah. Hello, good evening, everyone. I hope we've been richly blessed. Do we yes. have any? Hello? Yes, we are. Do we have any new, um, new, someone worshiping with us for the first time in our midst? Do we have anybody fellowshipping with us for the first time? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I believe they are coming in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Manila, for that wonderful word. God. Thank you, Pastor Manila, for that wonderful word. God bless you, man. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's time for our offering. And um, I'll be taking the scripture from Psalm 54, verse 6. Psalm 54, verse 6. It says, With a free will offering, I will sacrifice to you. I will give thanks to your name, O Lord, for it is good. Hallelujah. So without understanding, let's dip our hands into our pockets and our wallets. Let's log into our various mobile apps and let's give unto the Lord sacrificially. The account number will be displayed. Oh, it has already been displayed. And um, let us begin to pray. Let's say, Father, we thank you for the opportunity and the enablement to give. Father, we pray and ask that as we give, it shall be used for the propagation of the gospel in the name of Jesus. That where we have brought it out from, the Lord will replenish in multiple folds in the name of Jesus. And this shall be the list of our offerings in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because we know you have done it. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let's cast our offering. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You are all welcome to our online service. Hope you had a nice time. Mommy Lord, thank you for that powerful message. Online, let me start with our online viewers. Abraham, you are welcome. Brother Wajilore, you are welcome. Bess, we welcome you. Sister Christina, you are welcome. Sister Lizzie, you are welcome. Sister Janet, you are welcome. 
Sister Tokumbade, you are welcome. Sister Tosi, you are welcome. Dr. John, you are welcome. Who else Thank joined? you, Ma. Welcome. I don't know who joined. I think Michael joined. You are all welcome. Praise the Lord. Then our Hallelujah. own grand. Mommy Lord, you are welcome. Poeke, you are welcome. Mommy Best, you are welcome. Julius, you are welcome. Michael, you are welcome. Michael, too, you are welcome. Let's jam our hands together for Daddy. Daddy, too, is welcome. Myself, too, I'm also welcome. Praise the Lord. Hope Hallelujah. to see you next two, two Fridays, Abby, yes, in God. Jesus' name. Let us yes. take our church into icons of his glory. Please, Julius, make sure our icons of glory is not dragging as if he's sleeping. On Wednesday, it was just doing as if he's sleeping. We've said this over and over again. Praise the Lord. Amen. I don't want to know who is you. Choir, make sure our anthem is not dragging. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank <laughs> my path and the path of the destroyer shall never cross and because i am a son in this house i am mighty thank you for having church with us god bless you see you okay see you on sunday by the grace of god praise the lord Sister, I, yeah. I forgot to welcome Joe Ezekiel. Joe, please, you are welcome. Sister Jenna, did I welcome you? I yes. did. Okay. Okay, okay Sister Jenna, shout to an hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sister Christiana, shout to an hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Ah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One hallelujah. I know you're having lectures. Come and test. One hallelujah from you. He has gone out. I'm sorry. I didn't know. You are also welcome. One hallelujah from you people. 